Langchain has come up with open deep research. Now deep research has broken out completely into a most popular agent application. And we have big players in the space, for example, OpenAI, Anthropic, Perplexity, Google, they've all developed their deep research product. For example, if you take OpenAI, they have this deep research option where you can ask it to compile a research report on how the retail industry has changed in the past three years. And OpenAI is going to come up with a detailed report with some bullet points and tables, similar to how it's churning it out here. And then we have Anthropic, which has built the multi-agent research system that allows us to do search across the web, Google Workspace, and any integrations to accomplish complex tasks. We have, again, Perplexity, which has introduced deep research, and they launched it earlier this year, around February. And then we have Gemini from Google, in which you can obviously toggle deep research on and off and then uh, give a prompt to do any kind of research that you want and it's going to compile a report for you what langchain has done is it has built an open deep researcher that is simple and configurable and the best part is it allows us to bring our own model bring our own search tools and mcp server so it's fully customizable and it can run locally so it's built on top of langgraph and they have shared the code which is open source so what is the challenge for this kind of a research task the main challenge is that the user's request cannot be easily known in advance for example the user can ask compare these two products in which case you know we need to do a parallel research and then put them together in order to do a side-by-side -side comparison or the user could suddenly say find the top 20 candidates for this role and this typically requires open-ended search followed by a synthesis and ranking or it could be the user could simply say is x really true in which case the agent has to iteratively deep dive into a specific domain and the quality of the source matters because it it needs to validate if the given statement is true so these are the challenges but these all indicate that the open deep research should be flexible and that is what drives the architecture so how they have gone about designing this agent is by following three steps one is the scope the next one is research and the last one is to write the report the main purpose of scoping is to gather all user context needed for research mainly we need to do user clarification and then we need to generate a brief for the next step so that the brief exactly defines what needs to be done in the clarification step for example the user can ask what are the top 10 restaurants in chelsea the ai won't be clear whether it's in london or manhattan so it needs to clarify with the user and the user clarifies that it is manhattan and the ai is now clarified it, it goes ahead and creates the brief so the brief serves as the north star for success that's why they need to refer back to it throughout the research and the writing phrase and the brief will look somewhat like this what are the top 10 restaurants in chelsea manhattan as of july 2025 please consider all types of establishments and use reputable and recent sources such as official restaurant websites well-known food publications or trusted review platforms please pro provide direct link to the official restaurant websites whenever possible so once that brief stage is complete that brief is passed on to the research supervisor in order to do the research the goal of research is to gather the context requested by the research brief and it's done using a supervisor agent and the main aim of the supervisor is to delegate research task to an appropriate number of sub agents so the supervisor determines whether it can be broken down into independent subtopics or delegate to sub agents with isolated context windows and once the decision is made and the sub agents have come back with their research answers each sub agent finishes it makes a final llm call to write a detailed answer to the sub question post so this is what happens when the task is with each of the sub agents each sub agent is going to be delegated a different task with separate llm calls and each one could be doing its own research 
and this iteration continues and the third and final stage is that of report writing this is one shorting basically all the findings are fed into the report generation step which will be an llm and it comes up with the final report they've also shared some of the lessons that they have learned from the multi-agent systems by building some of these multi-agent systems one is that use multi-agent for easily parallelized tasks so if you cannot parallelize then probably multi-agent system is not best for you and multi-agent is useful for isolating context across sub research topics and the multi-agent supervisor enables the system to tune to required research depth the supervisor is key in digging deep into a given topic and lastly they are saying that context engineering is important to mitigate token bloat and steer behavior so with all that said let's just look into the code that they have shared and see how we can go about installing it running it locally and just trying it out so to get started we need to clone this open deep research repository and once we clone it we need to install a virtual environment using uv so if you don't have uv installed you can follow this instruction to get uv installed once you have uv we can clone the repository i'm going to clone it so we have cloned the repository i'm going to do cd open deep research i'm going to create a virtual environment using uv so the virtual environment is created and i'm going to activate the virtual environment so open deep research is the virtual environment created and it's now been activated i'm now going to install the dependencies from the toml file UV pip install pipe project dot so that's installing all the dependencies should be really fast so all the dependencies are now installed I'm going to clear the screen and I'm going to change this env example file into uh, n file so I'm just going to copy the now if I do ls minus al we can see that dot n file is there from here I'm going to open vs code so I have opened vs code and I've opened the open deep research folder here and we can see that there's a dot n file inside the dot n file we can see that there are different API keys that we can set based on what we will use obviously we're going to set these API keys now now we need to set the Langsmith tracing to false otherwise it's going to cause a few problems when you actually run the Langsmith Studio. So I've set it to false now. I can now go back to the terminal and start Langsmith. So I've come back to the terminal. I've pasted this command in order to start Langrab Studio. I'm just going to run that and we can see that it's opening up Langrab Studio. So it's given the link to open Langrab Studio and it's not giving any errors. We can see that it already has opened up the Langrab Studio for us. And on the top, we can see there's graph and also chat so if we go to chat this is where we can start chatting and we can interact with the deep researcher so i'm going to set a few configs before we can actually use this if we switch from chat to graph we can clearly see that it says langsmith api key is missing make sure that langsmith api key is set in your local service dot n file so let's go to langchain.com slash pricing and then let's start for free as a developer i'm just going to sign in with my google id so i have signed up so under tracing project i'm going to click on new project and i'm going to click on generate api key so that should give us the api key that we need to set so this is how the final config should look we should set the openai api key to your api key and we also need the tavili api key or the google api key in order for the agent to browse different websites and gather information so we need to set the Tavili API key. And for the Langsmith, we need to set these details. We need to set the tracing to true. Obviously, Langsmith needs to do the tracing and we need to set the Langsmith endpoint. We need to set the API key. And when we generate the API key, we will also get the project specific to that API key. So we need to set the project name here. We are now ready to run our agent to do any research. So now that the settings are sorted, I'm going to launch the studio. I'm just going to run this command and it's going to open deep research for us in the UI. So it has launched the deep research. I can now ask any questions. For example, what is the state of AI in the retail sector? I'm going to turn on the show tool call in order to see what tool calls are being invoked. And I'm going to hit enter. And it says, thank you. You have asked a report on the state of AI in the retail sector as of July 25. I understand you want an overview of how AI is being used, key trends, innovations, challenges, and impacts in retail. 
I will now begin the research based on the scope and it's still running. So it took a while and did the research and it has now come up with this report saying, you know, there's introduction, there's key trends in AI adoption in retail and this AI powered supply chain optimization, this computer vision in physical retail, seamless omni channel experiences, notable innovations and applications, and then says generative AI for content and product development. And there's even like major global retailers lead bold AI initiatives, for example, Amazon, Alibaba and Walmart. And there's infusion of venture fund venture funding catalyzes innovation from startups like, you know, there's a list of startups there. And there's also a list of challenges when it comes to application of AI, for example, scalability and integration, data privacy and ethical concerns. There's bias, transparency and trust. These are like everlasting problems with AI. And there's positive outcomes, there's negative consequences. And finally, this conclusion and beyond all that it has also listed the source from where it took all the information from so isn't that amazing so that's pretty much what i wanted to show today so with that we are wrapping up this quick overview of what how we can go about using open deep research and how we can go about running this locally in our machine and i hope to see you in my next video until then take care